Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make one of those cute little fish tank-like 3D dioramas of the ocean. A cool bathymetric scene, a little cube sliced out of our beautiful, beautiful sea. My incredible colleague, Dr. Dawn Wright, Deep Sea Dawn, is going to the bottom of Challenger Deep. So this will be the subject area of our diorama. Let's start with the very best data. I'm gonna search for Gebco. Oh my goodness. My colleague and friend, Keith Van Graflin, introduced me to Gebco a few years ago, and it was a game changer. It is a frequently updated, unified, global data set of bathymetry, and it's amazing. Let's look at what data they have available and choose this interactive map. And we'll just grab a slice of the ocean and download that as a geotiff. So here is Challenger Deep within the Mariana Trench. And I notice it says, use the keyboard, control plus mouse drag to choose your area of interest, which is actually really cool. So I'm gonna choose this area somewhere around here. And I'm gonna choose a square-ish thing. How do I know that I've got Challenger Deep in this location? It's because I Googled Challenger Deep coordinates and got this. So I can visually verify that my area of interest encompasses the location of Challenger Deep. We got it. It's in there somewhere. It's actually right there and there and there are the three pools of Challenger Deep. I'm gonna choose GeoTIFF as my preferred output format because I love GeoTIFFs and I'll add it to the basket. We'll check out this basket and then download it. There it is. Open this up and I can extract this to my working folder. And here it is in ArcGIS Pro. This is a 2D map. What we need is a 3D map. So I'm gonna to go to the View tab and choose Convert. And this is important. I'm gonna to choose to convert to a local scene, local scene. I could do a global scene, except this is underwater and I'll have a curtain from the surface sea level droop down, which is cool for some things, not for this. So local scene will make it all by itself. Here we are in a local scene. And if I tilt this, it's, oh, it's flat. It's totally flat. That's because the default world elevation surface is just for land. It doesn't include bathymetry. I'm gonna turn this off. Boop, I'm gonna duplicate this, copy, paste, and watch this. I'm just going to drag this bathymetric elevation model into the ground elevation surfaces. <gasps> what? Now I'm looking at only the bathymetry and no other elevation. Isn't that cool? That's pretty flat though. I mean, in real, this is it. This is in real life. This is, we're, st we're starting out at a kilometer and a half deep at the highest point here and it goes all the way down to almost 11 kilometers deep. But still, because this is such a broad area, it doesn't really look all that precariously deep, even though it really is. So for the sake of visual impressions, we're going to exaggerate. I'll choose ground, go to the appearance tab, and the vertical exaggeration is nothing right now. I'm gonna make this five. 5X reality. And now it looks about how it, look, it feels in my imagination. To dawn, it's probably going to feel like 50x because it's a many hour trip down to the bottom of this amazing thing. Now let's change this color scheme to something other than black to white. I'll choose, look at this set of bathymetric options. I'm going to go with bathymetry number three. And to give it a little bit of wrinkly sizzle, I'm going to go to the imagery tab, open the raster functions, amazing tools. And raster functions are cool because they don't create a new file. It just creates a new layer re-rendering this input layer. Hillshade. And I'll pick my elevation layer. I'll leave it traditional, that's fine. Okay, now I have a hillshade layer for my undersea world. And I'll give it a blend mode called, oh boy, what should I choose? Overlay? Yes, that looks great. For wrinkly, after wrinkly. Okay, now I want to create the little bounding box areas of where I'm seeing to construct my 3D fish tank cube. If I go back to my 2D map and I just draw a polygon covering my extent, here's how to do this really quickly. You can insert a map note, a polygon map note. So I'm gonna choose this and it adds an element into my project's geodatabase called polygon notes. And I can go into the edit tab and create inside polygon notes. Uh, I'm gonna do a polygon. I could do a square, 
It'll do a polygon and just hit the four corners like this. One, two, three, double click, accept it, and I'll come into the edit tab again and say save. Double check which one is saving. Yep, save it. And I'll go into the map tab and hit clear just so it's not selected. Okay, and I can close my edit dialog. So now I've created a polygon over my area of interest around Challenger Deep. I'm gonna copy this and I'll put it into my 3D map, paste. See, now this is sitting at sea level at the surface by default. But in addition to this top level, I want a bottom level and maybe even a few in between to show interesting depth profiles that are meaningful to oceanographers. And I have this little cheat sheet of notes about what the depth is in meters for each of these interesting zones. I'm going to add these in to our local scene and I'm just going to duplicate this. And instead of right clicking and choosing copy, I'll just hold control key and drag and that automatically makes a copy. Isn't that cool? So I'll select this lower one. I'm gonna put this all the way down to the bottom. If I double click this to open this layer's properties, I can go to the elevation tab and with an absolute height selected, I can give it a cartographic offset in the negative direction. Now let me show you something. If I go negative 11,000 meters, which is virtually the bottom of Challenger Deep, a couple meters deeper than the bottom of Challenger Deep, and hit okay, why doesn't it go all the way to the bottom? It looks like it's only going down about one fifth of the way down to what should be the bottom. That's because, remember, we gave our elevation surface a 5x vertical exaggeration. Vertical exaggeration doesn't apply to everything in the scene. That could get crazy and give you unwanted results. So we're just going to manually multiply this by 5. So this is going to be 55,000. So it looks right in our vertically exaggerated scene, if that makes sense. Now this is sitting in the bottom and we've got a little cube. And with this as a handy reference, I can actually um, kind of pivot this the way that I think it might look good in our resulting layout eventually. I'm right clicking to drag and that controls zoom. And if I press my center scroll wheel, I've got a lot of degrees of freedom. This looks like a nice view for our layout. And I'd better label these just to keep track. I'm gonna call this surface. And I'll call this the bottom. And I'm gonna add some more of these. Control and drag it to make a copy. And this one, the vertical exaggeration, I wanna set it to the twilight zone which is the mesopelagic zone, 1,000 meters, which means 5,000 meters in the negative direction. John Nelson, come on. Okay, there we go. And this will be called Twilight. And I'm going to do this two more times for the abyss and the trenches, 4,000 and 6,000, which would mean 20,000 and 25,000 negative offset. So now I'm going to create a new layout. Insert, new layout, and I'll choose custom page size. And I would like it to be about the size of my screen, so I'll choose points, and I want it to be 1920 by 1080, but in points that works out to 1440 by 810. And into my layout, I will now insert a map frame, specifically this one that we've just been working on. And I'll snap it to the edges. Next, I'm going to start manually drawing fake dirt curtains along the side of this scene. So you'd better have the perspective and set up the way you like it, because if you move your map later, it'll screw everything up. So let's make sure we've got this right where we want it. I can right click this map view and choose activate. And this lets me geographically move it around and I'm going to center it a little bit better. 
just like that. And I'll open up these layers and I'm gonna turn off these in-betweensies. And now I'm going to, well, I'll exit my activated map view. Now I'm in the layout. Now I'm going to manually draw in some dirt curtains here to make it look like I've sliced this and it's a little cutout extrusion of the seafloor. In the insert menu, in this graphics and text area, I'm going to choose this polygon option and I'll trace this left front face. I'll come up here and I'll find this edge of my mud. And now I'm just gonna trace the curve of this, the edge of my seafloor scene. Notice how I'm airing on this side of the line instead of this side. That way there won't be any gaps. If this overlaps a little bit, you'll never know in the final result. Okay, now I'm gonna pause right here for a second because I wanna show you a trick I'm gonna do. I wanna add a little bit of geological interest into the side of this dirt curtain. So I'm gonna slice it right here because I know that this is a subduction plate and it gets engulfed by this plate and it kind of goes down like a ramp. So I'll draw this. That's where I'll stop it. This I will use one texture and this side of the dirt curtain I'll give another texture. And now I'll just start drawing this one over here. And then I'll do my final dirt curtain on this right side. And I'll name these. Now I'm going to insert a layer on the top. I'm going to nearly trace this um, surface reference that I drew, but I'm going to add a couple. I'm going to add one node at the intermediate place of all these, and then I'm going to apply a Bezier curve to these, so it looks slightly ripply. It's funny what a difference that makes. I'll show you what I mean. Insert polygon. Okay, how do I make them bendy? I'm going to right click this shape that I just drew and choose edit vertices and then for this line segment I mouse over the line segment and I get a little bendy graphic. If I right click I can change the segment to a bezier curve and I can make this a little bit more toned down. I'll bring it about halfway. Nothing too crazy. I'll do the same thing here. Right click, change segment, bezier curve, and if I just move this one, they're locked. But if I hold, I learned from my friend Tommy, the control key, it only moves that one node. Thank you, Tommy, for that sweet tip. And I can come down here, change this one. It just gives this a subtle little waviness. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. Nice and wavy. Now, it no longer matches the top layer that I have here, which means I can just turn it off. 3D layers, surface. Oh, um, I'm gonna go here and modify this so it hits the edge perfectly. Edit vertices, grab this one, move it to the edge, accept it. Okay, now I can turn off that surface reference. I'll rename the polygon that I just drew to be surface. Now I have two more polygons to draw. It's a lot of polygon drawing. I'm gonna draw the left face of the fish tank and the right face of the fish tank. And it's a little bit tough because I have to somewhat match this curve. I don't have to match it perfectly. I just need to go behind it so that when I put a texture into this top area, you don't see the overlap.
Now it looks bad, but I'm gonna have a solid picture fill for this surface. And when I drag it all the way to the top, whatever I put in here will cover up everything underneath. Here I am at the amazing unsplash.com where you can search for royalty free photography. I'll search for ocean and see what we've got. This looks like it will be handy. So I'll choose this and this download option. I'll choose medium because there's a limit in the size. I think it's around 2000 pixels and 1920 is perfect. So I'll choose medium. Thanks Connor Sexton. Then I'll open the properties for this surface polygon and I'll choose the symbol and go to the layers. I'll uncheck this stroke outline and instead of a solid fill, I'll give it a, you guessed it, picture fill. Quality, I'll set to picture. I'll choose the image that I just downloaded. And it's really small, so I'm gonna make it big enough to stretch fully across. And that turns out to be about 900 points. If I hit apply, you can see a nice realistic wave on the top. Now, I kinda like the top part of the picture a little bit better than this, because the waves were a little bit smaller. So on this Y offset in the pattern group, I can just give it an, I'm gonna say negative 100 points to push the picture down a little bit so we see closer to the top of the picture. Let's see what negative 200 looks like. Too far, I can see the horizon, the end of it. So back to 100, that looked good. Okay, we have a realistic-ish wavy pattern on top of our wavy fake top to our 3D scene. And while I was in Unsplash, I also downloaded a graphic of dirt and one of gravel. And I'm gonna apply dirt and gravel to these dirt curtains here on the side, a different one for each of these to replicate the little geologic layers being subducted. And I want a little shaded gradient to this to give it a little bit of a sense of depth. So I'm gonna come into the structure and I'll add a symbol layer it's going to be a fill layer, and I want it to be a gradient layer. The pattern will be linear. Instead of discrete, it'll be continuous, and it'll go from a blackish color to a transparent black. So I'll open this up again and go into the properties and make this 100% transparent. We'll see what we get. Interesting, a little bit of a depth. I want it to be angled like our surface is. Right now the angle is 90. What if it's, man, I never know if it's less or more. I'm gonna guess bigger, so 110. Nope, I was wrong. <laughs> Not 80. Okay, cool. Let's do the other dirt curtain. Now looking at this, it's a little dry and I'm not totally happy with this gravel. So I'm gonna switch this to a different image I got on Unsplash and it's a rock face. It looks a little bit more geological to me, more interesting. And the horizontal banding in the texture is nice. And I'll just angle these so they match and I like this, I like it better. This is how it works. You try something, you change it. Now the black is a little dry too. I wanna to try something more like a magma warm glow. So I'm changing this to a solid amber color fading to a transparent deep red crimson color. And I like this. It's a little too much though. So I'm gonna bring back another shade layer and this time it's gonna be you know, transparent black to black at the edges. And I'll do this for the other dirt curtains as well. Bring in the warm glow from the bottom and give it a little bit of shade with a semi-transparent black radial gradient. I think the result is a lot more interesting visually. Some warms to balance out those cool tones of the deep sea. And now I'm doing something for the glassy fish tank wall. I'm gonna give it a radial gradient with a transparent cyan in the middle, and I'm gonna give it a like a more opaque, darker blue edge. Just play with this a little bit. 
and I'll drag it underneath the dirt curtains so it's not rendering on top of the dirt. Now it looks like something that's a little bit glassy, just a little bit of opacity, like we're seeing through a fluid medium here. It's all just tricks. Now I'm doing the same thing for the right glass face. And I'm not entirely happy with the generalness of these waves, so I'm gonna add more vertices to this thing. Make it a little bit more choppy and wavy and complex. It was a little bit too cartoony before, so I've just added some more vertices. I like this better. So I'm going to bring back these depth references that I made in the 3D scene earlier. And I just want to keep the corners of them, just like a little bit of a chiseled, beveled glass, like a cut edge into the fish tank. And I'm making a polygon shape. And instead of a black outline, I'm going to give it a gradient white fill. So it's white in the middle and it tapers out to fully transparent at the edges, just like it's a little chipped in little beveled carve like this. And then I can get rid of the reference, the actual reference layer. So now all I have is that graphic layer and I'll line this up a little bit better. And I like it very subtle, but that's fine. And I'll do this for the other depth references as well. I'm just going to make a copy of the one I already drew and just change the position of those vertices. So they line up with my depth reference and I can turn off that depth, depth reference. Do it again for the third time, this bottom layer called the trenches. Turn off the reference layer. Now we have these three kind of visually manually hand-drawn chiseled out references of different depth zones. Now I'm just going to label them. I like Century Gothic a lot for mapping. A nice sans serif. It's crisp. It's, it's lightweight. But it's also, it is kind of wide, so it hogs up a lot of space. But in this case, I can handle a lot of horizontal space. Just get the size right. And instead of a solid white, I'm going to dig into this and give it a, a linear gradient because I can. And I'll just duplicate these for the other depth labels. I'm not a fan of the rotation, so I'm going to bring them back to horizontal alignment and just play with their font size. So much of what we do is just trying something and seeing how it looks. None of this is known ahead of time fully. None of this is just rote design. You try something, and if you like it, you keep it. So now I'm adding a little bit more information to that label. The Twilight Zone is called the Mesopelagic Zone and giving its depth. Same for the Abyssopelagic Zone. And then lastly, the Hadel Zone or Hadel Zone. I don't know how it's pronounced. I just barely know how it's spelled. And I'll duplicate this text. Now I'm going to label these interesting plates. This is the P Pacific Plate, and it's diving under. It's getting subducted by the Mariana Plate to the west. And that's why it's such a deep groove carved out of the bottom of the Pacific within the Mariana Trench. I 
And now instead of just white, I'm gonna add a darker version of, I've duplicated this and I'm gonna make it like a semi-transparent blue version, a little bit darker, just to give it a little bit of carved out dimensionality. Super hack. And I'll copy that down to the others as well. I'm gonna make a couple little tweaks to this shade so it's a little bit different on the facing edge compared to the Pacific plate edge on the left. Looks better, right? Okay, now I'm gonna label the actual locations of the three pools of Challenger Deep. The Eastern Pool, the Central Pool, and the Western Pool, just like the universities in the state of Michigan. I went to Central. And I'll drag up a rectangle from the location of the Eastern Pool and give it a nice little sweet gradient fill like a little beam of light shining up from the depths because why not a little thick I'll trim it down a little bit and then I'll just duplicate this to the other pools too Now you notice, I'm gonna chisel off that little bottom corner by editing the vertices of these rectangles. So it fits better. Okay. And we are pretty much done at this point. All I'm gonna do now is add a circle graphic and I'm gonna give it a little circular gradient where it's opaque white in the middle and then transparent cyan at the very edges and it looks like a little bit of light catching the edge of that fracturous tectonic plate there in the like glassy little edges of the glass i'm going to label those depth reference chiseled areas and just play with this a little bit make it a little bit less noisy and just duplicate it anywhere it goes man like a like the like the logo on the side of the Bigfoot truck in the 1980s when I was a kid. I loved all those glows and shimmers and sparkles on the text. Makes things look really fun and airbrushed in, in the 80s. And I, I think that kind of works for this aesthetic. And then lastly, I'll just give this a title, Challenger Deep. And I'll kind of drape this diagonally across the side of the fish tank. And I've given it a lot of letter spacing because letter spacing makes things look grand and glorious. Then all that's left to do is export this thing as a PNG with a transparent background. In my case, you can export it however you like and you share it with your map friends. And that's it, my friends. I hope you give this a shot, make some undersea worlds, get into some underwater adventures, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching.